doesn't I don't care what you ask. I'm giving the answer that's in my head. Nixon doesn't think black people exist. Nixon doesn't think young people exist. Nixon's only concerned about the middle silent majority, which we don't have to worry about because it's silent. Uh, what is that? I have a silent majority. Well, how do you know? It's silent. Um, young people are the only people in this whole country that have saved the soul of America by protesting the yeah. crimes committed in Vietnam, Asia, and at home in the courts and in the jails, etc. Already I'm concerned about... See, I, I get the feeling you're giving Mr. me... sincerity here. I, you're oh. giving me answer 23B, so you want to... No, it's 27A. All right. Well, let's... let's uh, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean, don't you? It, no, I don't. Well, I'm disappointed that you don't seem to be able to converse with me. You know, sort of, I ask you a question, and you start waving your eyes and look at those people. Why but don't you look at me, I, uh, and I'll ask you a question, because it's sincerely asked... Didn't I just... I, no, I, I no, I want, I want to know... You, I've met you before. I don't didn't, think didn't so. Didn't we meet 5th Street in New York? You sold me that dope? <laughs> <laughs> you're my... What are, you, what are you doing? Sort of uh, on the side, you're a TV personality, and you're the biggest dope dealer in New York City. Yeah. And you come on, he comes on the show real sincere. I want to sincerely tell the people about your real activities, man. Yeah, that's cute. You, you, you got the best LSD and best pot in town. You, you fly in, you, no wonder you know the air schedule so well. You're flying in New York and making deals on 5th Street, 6th Street, 7th Street. He comes on here real serious now. Do you think it might prolong? Th that's cute. <laughs> it's, like, it's true. Uh, okay. But you're you're upset that I've uh, I've uh, but I I've destroyed your cover. But you know if if you're I have to you can understand how I would question the sincerity of your convictions about the war and people dying in Vietnam and people dying here at home and the my problems wife, of poverty. My when wife, you come on and tell funny stories about me my, selling dope, my, that's wasting my, time. My, my wife is right now in uh, Sweden, uh, meeting with the Viet Cong and the uh, North Vietnamese yeah, let's talk about and, uh, uh, stu and student revolutionaries right. throughout Europe Good for to your plan wife. for a day of demonstrations sometime in the fall when okay. in every country in the world, from Japan to the Soviet Union, every country in the world, people are going to be in the streets Good. protesting America spelled with a K in Vietnam okay. and Asia. Now that's your wife. Let's talk about Jerry. Now here we are. You've got X thousands of uh, uh, people out there who are listening to you now, mad at me because I put you on. All right, here's an opportunity. Take dope. Smoke dope. Um, American Army's falling apart because of all the pot smoking. You yeah. dig that, don't you? Uh, let I me, mean, uh, you, you know, you know how the war in Vietnam is going to end. The war in Vietnam is going to end. That's going to be another cute story. The war in Vietnam is going to end when the American Army puts down its guns or turns its guns around and aims it at the head of the generals. And marijuana smoking right now is so prevalent in the army, people just want to get high. They don't want to go out and fight and die. Okay. You well, dig it? Yeah. Dig can it? I, can so I, there's, a, there's a real connection. There's a real connection between pot smoking in, the, in, in, in Asia mm -hmm. and the defeat of the American army. Yeah. Because here's American boys, American men, sent thousands of miles away to Asia to fight for land that, you know, they don't even speak the language. And what are they fighting for? And they're fighting against peasants, fighting against 15 year kids fighting against housewives fighting against everybody you know every single person would who, 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 who is vietnamese is a, is a potential enemy so what are we doing over here someone hands up a joint and say yeah i just want to get high come back and get high and get thrown in jail for getting high it's incredible yeah well let, let me tell you with uh, and understand i haven't made any conclusions i no, of course you have i want to know you're just an open book right <laughs> uh i'm concerned that uh th your efforts could undermine the efforts what of I, who? The, the efforts of the people who since uh, long before you like thought who? about it. Like who? American Friends Service Committee, Quakers. Oh, they're not doing anything. People who marched in the moratorium in Washington. They're not doing much. Oh, we're, we're in league See, with them. We're, we're, let me we're, tell you what I'm speaking. Wait a minute, man. Listen, uh, you're not giving me speeches. We'll, we'll each make a... I'm speaking at the moratorium rally in San Francisco and Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Dig it. I'm speaking there. You yeah, see, look, look, you, you look, look, you look, young people... Do you understand look, what bothers me? No, I don't. Because you, you, you've got a psychological problem. I'm not your psychiatrist. <laughs> look, young people, young, young, young people know that this government has no morality. That this country was founded on the destruction of the Indians. Yeah. Young people, you speak for yeah. young people. I, I'm, I'm speaking for, for, for myself, right, well and I'm speaking for a truth that I feel in the streets. Right. And if you don't feel it, you're blind. Because yeah. young people know that the people that have power in this country have no soul, no morality, and no ears. Yeah. Absolutely not. And we know, and we know, we know that this war is not going to be ended by writing a letter to President Dick Nixon. Because Dick, Nick, Dick Nixon is a criminal. He's a war criminal. He is a war criminal. He, 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 he missed his chance in Nazi Germany. He would have done very well as the head of the, of, of the Hitler Republic. And now he's just the head here. And Spiro Agnew, what do you think he is? He's just a super Nazi. You know that. And we know that the only way to change this country is by overthrowing the government. That's the only way. That's the only way to warn Vietnam is going to be ended. How else do you think it's going to be ended? By writing a letter to Dick Nixon, please get out of Vietnam. What are you talking about? He's a racist. When, when, when a yellow person dies in Vietnam, that doesn't count. Because the only good yellow person is a dead yellow person in Dick Nixon's head. You don't, you don't think it's possible that the polarization that 
your kind of behavior creates. I'm asking you a question. Can serve... I'm listening. Can serve to enhance the uh, position of Dick Nixon in the White House? To, you know, if you're yeah. against Dick Nixon, mm -hmm. middle America is just liable to think, listen, anybody this cat is yeah. against can't be all bad, I'm going to vote yeah. for him. Yeah, but see, see um, Nixon will find anything he needs to enhance his power. The fact is, is there's got to be a polarization in the country. There's got to be a polarization. Well, wait, listen, right. I get two sentences out, and you act like you're got like to be toilet, a, you know. It's like, uh, 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 gotta uh, be listen, why don't you shut up and let me talk, you know. You invited me down, and you said, you got to come here. We have no music. We have no guests. If you don't come, we have no guests. Now you ask me a question. You keep quiet. Maybe the punchline will contain your answer, you know. Mm -hmm. you, you know you, so so don't, don't be so constipated, I'm just, okay? I'm don't be so constipated. I'm just, I'm just. I'm just disappointed relaxed. that oh, you're so... I'm disappointed in you. You're so incapable of functioning. I'm totally incapable of... I'm a misfit. Fit. Haven't you realized? I'm a misfit. I don't fit in to this plastic TV show with this plastic TV personality. I don't fit into that. I don't fit into that. And every young kid out there knows that you're plastic. They know you're a plastic man. I don't fit into that. I don't, I don't fit into your asking p ridiculous questions because you know darn well that the people who are ending this war are the people who are draft resistors in jail, are the people who, who are in courtrooms yeah. who, uh, uh, like the Conspiracy 10. Now it's 10 because our lawyers are defendants too. The Conspiracy 10 that are facing... Uh, up to 25 years in jail together. Okay. Hey, got it. I you thought said, you wanted me to look at you go, when you're talking. Go. Now you're no longer looking. You're looking down at the book and so forth. Anyway, the purpose of TV is to sell soap. So here's the book. Do it. Young kids should steal it. This book is banned in Cincinnati. Shilotos, Pogues, all those pig department stores, none of them will carry the book. You can only get it, I think, in... <laughs> you can only get it in, in I think, Kids and uh, one of the campus bookstores. Young kids should go in and say, where's the book? See, they won't hold it, but they got all the kinds of books by uh, uh, all the right-wing liberal professors and so forth. They won't hold this book. This book, first sentence, this book will become a Molotov cocktail in your very hands. Um, page you four, still, it says, you, you got to read it stoned. You say, uh, read this book stoned. Yeah. You say, do it! Do it! You say the uh, heroes are the people who've gone to jail and who are drafted. Now, there are several, hundreds of people in jail who, uh, Thousands, haven't, who, haven't, all right, who haven't found it necessary to behave like you. That's my. That's you don't like my behavior. I'm embarrassed by your behavior. Here you come. I'm on wondering. Here, here, you come, here you come. Here you come on here with a suit and a tie, and you and, and that suit and tie is the uniform of imperialist America. Do you know? Do you know people who speak in a calm, uh, uh, silly voice like you with a suit and tie are the same people? Are the exact same people who are running the jail system, running the court system, running the corporations? You look like a college dean running the school prisons, that's which are no, I'm not then. Which oppress young people. People who look less like you are the same type of people that are running the war in Vietnam. You see, what we have, what we have recognized is that the American middle class in its suit and tie is the real criminal, is the real criminal. And, 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 and so you taught us that lesson of Nazi. You, you taught us the lesson of Nazi. I don't. Well, uh, excuse, I don't. Don't, don't. It's impolite to interrupt. I don't. I, I learned that in school. It's impo impolite to interrupt. So the people out there want me to get a thought out, and you're, you're really constipated. You're really, you're, you really got it. You really got it. You really got an anal problem. I don't uh, judge people. What's your name? What's your name? Phil. Phil, uh, not Tom. Yeah. I don't. Oh, I don't judge okay. people on the on the clothes that they wear, and I'm disappointed that you. Oh, I'm sorry, you're disappointed. Well, it won't be the first or the last time. I'm sure. I'm sure you're disappointed in the young people that burned down the Bank of America in Santa Barbara, an act which freed us out of jail. I'm sure you're disappointed in the hundreds of thousand people that had riots all over the country when we were jailed because they freed us. That's well, how we, we got free. We didn't get free. We didn't get freed by 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 old uh, Phil or Tom or whatever his name is Donahue sitting up here. We got freed by the young people who shed their blood, who shed their life, who went into the Streets. That's how we got free. And the Vietnamese, and the Vietnamese know, you see, you see, America, America only responds to fire. They only recognize poverty when the ghettos burned. All of a sudden the ghettos burned and people said, hey, maybe people are poor, maybe blacks are oppressed. They only recognized the war in Vietnam when somebody burned himself in the Pentagon, when 100,000 people went up and sieged the Pentagon. You know, take, this, take these liberal senators like McCarthy and McGovern and, and Kennedy, all, the, all, all those guys. They only spoke after the crazies, the freaks, the nuts, the idiots went into the streets and started burning draft cards, started, started throwing rocks at buildings. Then all of a sudden they said, well, these young people, their methods not be good, but they got a point. What are we doing over in Asia, Asia anyway? You see, so we, we, we know that this country only responds to polarization and dramatic protest. We're talking with Jerry Rubin, a member We're of the talking with Seven. Phil we'll Donahue and Smoke Dope. <laughs>
audience to speak. Hi there, Jerry Rubin on the line, hello. would like to know, since you speak for the young, what is your age? My age, 15. <laughs> mentally, I'm not speaking about mentally, I'm speaking about chronologically. No, mentally, physically, 15. <laughs> Uh, uh, what, may I ask Jerry, you that's, that's you the nicest compliment I've been paid. Uh, because 15-year-old kids know where it's at. 15-year-old kids haven't yet been propagandized uh, by the school system, by the media, by the I, press, I agree by the with churches, you, and America First, and all I that bull. I agree that 15-year-olds so do know 15. more than you. Yeah. What? 15-year-olds do know more than you. Not many 15-year-olds would run around looking the way you do. Uh, Nor would they think Jerry they're a country born. that has given them the right to walk around like you. See, like, there are, there, are, there are two births. There's your first birth, which is like your physical birth. And then there's your, your uh, religious or your real birth. Now, I, um, and most young people in this country experience death before life. That they're born dead because they're prisoners in the, at the, in the home, they're prisoners in the school system. Well, and then I... all of a sudden, well, excuse me, then all of a sudden something happens. Uh, they're involved in a demonstration. They uh, get stoned. Something happens and they wake up and they decide, wow, everything my parents have told me is a lie. Everything I learned in the school system is a lie. Well, you know... Truth, wait a minute, wait a minute. Truth is contained within. All of a sudden they have a new birth. And I was reborn. So actually I'm really six years old because I was reborn in 1964 in the first massive student demonstration in Berkeley in 1964, the free speech movement. And I've been getting reborn ever since. And I think that what young people are going through is a total rebirth, finding out that when they were kids, they were prisoners in their home by their parents and their teachers. You oh, have one more brief comment, ma'am. Oh, come now. Really? Yeah. You mean to tell me, how many children do you have of your own? About three million. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I mean ones that you uh, will admit to, well, and give your name to. Yeah, he's, he was born in 1938. 1938. Well, yeah. you know, so you're chronologically about... ridiculous, born in 1938. Hi there, Jerry mean? Rubin on the line. Hello. Hello, it's Ray Clark. Yeah, good. Oh, uh, how can a station hold their license and uh, have such filth as this on, on TV? <laughs> how, can, how can you uh, put out what used to be called yeah. yellow journalism? Look, don't let this guy fool you. I said earlier, he's the biggest dope dealer in New York City. He got stoned before the show began. And, uh, you know, hey, did that's you ever, where he's uh, at. That's... A, yeah, but well, you don't, you think, put you don't, think, Jerry, on, you don't huh? think Jerry should be on. No, I don't think he should yeah, be on. I, think, I, don't, I think you're responsible for having defend him. Defend civil liberties now. Yeah. Come on, defend the First Amendment. Well, go ahead. I, I think that defend the, the First Amendment. Now, who, who should decide who should and should not be on? Spiru! Spiru should decide. The President of the United States, Spiru Agnew. Well, Ask Kim they, Agnew. You know Spiru they... Agnew's daughter, Kim Agnew, was busted for pot. 14 years old, you dig where that's at? His other daughter wanted to march in the moratorium and old Spiro locked her up in the bathroom. Uh. And, and Spiro said that um, we, we parents must decide for our children what is right and wrong and what they can do. Some yeah. of our children will grow up and they'll be parents and they yeah, can decide for their kids what to do. You could do better gonna, with, uh, as parents, we ain't going to oh, decide for our kids what's right and wrong. Talk. We're going to get stoned with our kids. No. Can uh, you dig it? You had a, you had a question? They're not even letting you talk. Yeah, that, go ahead. That's their type. That, that's their type. They, yeah. they won't even let you talk to him. Yeah, the, he won't let you talk. But you're right, no. and uh, that is that is discouraging. No, well, you it's won't. You're you're responsible for it. Uh, you're right. Yeah. You're right. You're, you're responsible for what you have yeah. on. Um, well, what, listen, let's try, let's try something. Ask him a question. Let's see if we can get uh, a, a conversation going here. No, I, I don't, I, I wanted to ask you because you're the one that's responsible yeah. for having him on. Yeah. You're, well, you're the I'll just one. Leave. I don't, uh, wait a minute. Uh, look, you're, let, let's, let's, uh, let's not be afraid of ideas. Let's, let's realize that, uh, we're, we're that we don't, afraid. you know, we don't, you don't get anywhere by turning your back on this thing. And uh, my grandparents, my grandchildren are going to read about this trial. No way around it. You know, we can't just forget about it. We, it's, uh, it's there. It's important. Even no, though you may not agree with it, very unpopular, no question. Jerry Rubin is not going to be elected to anything. No, okay, we're, right? we're not disagreeing with that. Uh, the, past, the past always is afraid of the future. You're, you're just putting and, on and, yellow and journalism. Tom, no, you're Donahue, on. Tom Donahue expresses... He expresses... Phil Donahue, excuse me. I, I know a disc jockey in um, it's just you know, San Francisco. Yellow journalism is all you have uh, on. You're um, just, uh, the past is always frightened to death of the future. 
they, they won't and, let and you it's talk. like the British they won't. the British said no. how can you how can you let Tom Jefferson uh -uh. and George Washington no, uh, you won't uh, let say people these talk. things there wasn't television then so it couldn't you, say you go say on you television want people to call you and, and, talk and, and, you and that's talk. the whole history and so America is very afraid the only difference you got your answers written they, down before people talk to you at the same yeah. time yeah that's right he is well he, he's got some, he's got his show and I got my show and yeah. people can have a split screen and decide who they want to watch well, except he controls the cameraman th thanks for calling okay thank you Hi, Jerry Rubin on the line. Hello. Uh, hello, Phil. Is your audience comprised of young people? I mean, the ones applauding this idiot. Well, there's... <laughs> well... No. Over, m most of the audience is over 30. And don't use words like idiots so loosely, you know? Well, we're proud you, to be idiots. You are. Uh, if that's uh, the name you call us, we're proud to be idiots. We're proud to be any name that middle America calls us, that the establishment calls us, you know? Well, you I'm call a grand... You communists, you call us anarchists. Why don't you shut up? You're right. We're, every, we're the rejection of everything you stand for. Look. I want to show you a picture of uh, Jerry when he was young. Go ahead. You had a, did you have a question yeah. you wanted to ask, uh, ma'am? I, I just object to young people applauding this idiot. If this All right, wait a minute. Now, this is Jerry. There you see Jerry in the lower right-hand corner. This is a high school picture. Look how straight he is there on the right. And uh, that's Jerry with an American flag as a child on the left and a sailor suit. Uh, this, these pictures compliments of Esquire uh, magazine. Um, well... I, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. What's Jerry now? Yeah, what, what did you, what was your... No, uh, no, uh, Phil, can I make a comment about well, that? Well, let's another ask well, a question. Well, you made a you're comment. You're going to be here all yeah. day. You're going to be here for the rest, for, of, the for the rest of my life. Let me make a comment about those pictures, because okay. I think it's very interesting. It's like the first chapter of my book is titled, uh, Child of America. Yeah. And that's, that's the amazing thing, is the yippies and SDS and the weathermen and all the the movements across the country that, that they, you know that are tearing up the campuses and are disrupting the trials and so forth all of us come out of middle class homes come up, up, up out of upper middle class homes uh, come out of working class homes my father was a truck driver for Rubles Breaking Company in Cincinnati we're not invaders from Mars we're not invaders from the Soviet Union or China we come right out of the living rooms of middle America you see and we have we, we, we have experience in a way, you could say the best that America can offer. We've experienced materialism, we've experienced middle-class society, and we found it's very unsatisfying. Mm -hmm. We found that our parents are very unhappy, mm -hmm. our parents are very lonely, our parents don't live satisfying lives, and we've been, we've, we've been driven from looking like the picture you showed into, into trying to find a new way of life. We realize the Chinese and the Viet Cong are our brothers, yeah. and that Nixon is the enemy, and, 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 and we're, 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 we're working together, young people across this country, all over the place. Salt Lake City, 5,000 young people came out to me speak all together. Since then, wherever you go, young people are creating a new society. That's mm -hmm. the most beautiful thing. You know what old Tom Jefferson said? Tom Jefferson said that every society needs a revolution every 30 years. Okay. A revolution means that the people in power are going to call you names. They're going to call you idiots. They're going to be uh, programmed to call you everything that they want to call you. But young people realize that we have a natural, in inherent human right to make a revolution. Good. And, and we've got to relate to the oppression in this country. We've got to relate to the fact that in every jail in this country, 90% of the prisoners are black. 90% of the prisoners are black. And in this country, 10% of the people... People are black because the jails are nothing more than concentration camps where white society stores its black people. And are the Black Panthers and the black people are our brothers and the middle class white revolutionaries and Black Panthers and Viet Cong are uniting to make a revolution against the, the Roman Empire. Right. And America right now is the Roman Empire. Now let me make a point, okay? If you believe in peace and love, I, you know, you owe it to me to allow me to uh, try and get you to respond to the point that I've been trying to make since the beginning of the program. <laughs> And that is that back in the early 60s, when it was terribly unpopular, when to suggest that the war was wrong, the Vietnam War, yeah. you were you were a communist homosexual. I think there are people, anybody who's, who's, you were uh, yeah. very unpatriotic. Well, who, 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 people who, who, who began, carried who signs, began people who stood on the who corner of the streets. protest of the war? Do you know? Young people. The first... Young people. Major protests against the war. No, wait a minute. Wait, you're interrupting was organized me again. by SDS, SD, Students for Democratic Society. Twenty-five thousand people I, marched in Washington. I, I don't know. That I was think the Quakers by... might have beat them. I really do. I think the Quakers well, could have been ahead of them. Anyway, I don't think the Vietnam you're still not letting me make my I point. I dig the Quakers. What can oh, brother Quakers? I think, I think I dig that it. Uh, I think that uh, history will. Uh, I think we owe a great debt to these people who made it possible for the frightened people to say, Hey, maybe the war is death, aren't you? Hey, maybe the war is death. Wait a minute. Now you're not letting me finish. to death. maybe the war is bad. Maybe maybe we shouldn't have been there. Hey, everybody right? thinks the war is now, bad. Now I'm saying that I really I feel if it hadn't been for these people, what people? Who, these these people who who dissented on the street corner, 
without the scent on the street corner without exhibitionism no oh, okay. without exhibitionism oh, well, well all right without, you have a great without, you have right, a, you have a great no. wait a minute you have I, a great town of rewriting history the first demonstrations that people were called traitors called oddballs called yeah, idiots that's true called they were freaks that's true and, and you know who that's organized the, one of the first big demonstrations in, in this country true. the person you're looking at right here we stopped uh. troop trains in berkeley and it was a headline across the world traitors stopped troop trains taking soldiers to vietnam and people i was on tv and they said how can you do it you're alienating middle middle america you're doing this always the people right. who are in the forefront are alienating always okay. you're in the forefront you want you know what you, you want to do me, you got you, a messianic you know what you uh, want? absolute truth uh, sort of uh it, really, it's a presumption you gotta, of uh, you're so frightened, man. Ego. You are scared to death. You are so frightened. You are scared of losing your job. You're scared to death of life itself. You know, you're now scared of standing out. How would you know out. that? See, you know what you're asking me. How would you know? You haven't given me question. an opportunity to make any points, no, Jerry. Your question. Your question. You know what your question. Let's blo- let's let your question. I know what my uh, question. commercial. Why do we need a commercial? No, let's I want go this. On. Ma'am, are you still there? I sure am. Oh, okay. <laughs> We ain't getting along too well. Yeah, go Except ahead. Except we get along well when he sells me dope. <laughs> go ahead. No, I then he doesn't have a suit and tie on. He's a good reason that I, I don't think the 18-year-old should vote. I don't oh. either. I don't either. I think the 13-year-old should vote. No, I, I think the 10-year-old should enough. vote. I think the 8-year-old should vote, and I don't think anybody over 50 should vote unless they can pass the test throwing up all the garbage that they memorized. Okay, thanks for calling. Thank you. Can we take another one? Hi, you had a brief question for Jerry Rubin. Uh, yes, Mr. Donahue. First of all, I'd like him Mr. to know Donahue. that I am speak- that he is speaking to one of his peers. I'm 22 years old, and I'm a college graduate, and I followed his movement closely. And since he seems to advocate man's humanity to man, I would appreciate his being more polite to me than he has been to previous callers. Uh, first of all, that- Mr. Rubin, how long do you think you would stay alive were you to advocate your policy in Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Russia, or Red China for that matter? Well, I wouldn't be advocating uh, when I'm advocating now. There, I'd advocate. Hey, why don't you, you finish, me? man? Why don't you let me finish? Huh? So nice. You're interrupting a lot. You're really interrupting a lot. Go. You're very nervous. You're so nice to her, and you, huh? you treat me... Uh, okay, go ahead. Talk yeah. to her. Uh, I, I, adv- I advocate um, a revolution in all those countries, except China. I advocate a revolution in those countries. I think that we need a world revolution. I think that's what's happening. Well, why do you... Uh, why do you... Well, wait, let me... Oh, uh, certainly. <laughs> okay. Um, but the thing is, it's very easy for me to, s- to be an, uh, an American and be on American land and soil and to advocate a revolution in Hungary or Russia. A lot of people go around this country, the patriots go around this country advocating to overthrow the Russian government, the Chinese government. Nothing happens to them. They're dressed in red, white, and blue. They're the American Legion. The, the test comes when you advocate change in your own country. And look what happens to us when we advocate change in our own country. We cross state lines to go to Chicago to protest the Democratic Convention. The, the, the pigs attacked us in the streets, wouldn't let us assemble in the parks, wouldn't let us march. This was in America in 1968, you see? and and, and and the organizers of those marches ended up uh, in court, federal trial, five months, with Julius Adolf Hitler Hoffman as the judge. And we ended up getting uh, 25 years all together, five years apiece. Our lawyer was sentenced to five years in jail. So well, the, yo- the young people in this country who try to change the government find out they end up in jail. Timothy Leary is right now in jail in California for 20 years. John Sinclair, the Minister of Information of the White Panther Party, is in jail for 10 years for smoking dope. Bobby Seale, Eldridge Cleaver, Huey Newton, the Black Panther Party has systematically attacked... Yeah. Wait a you, minute, you, wait a minute. You talk too much, dear. Uh, that's okay. Uh, the Black look. Panther Party has been systematically attacked by, by the, by the, by the, by the kids on the yeah. federal and state level. So anyone who tries to protest in this country finds out that there's no First Amendment, it doesn't exist. Okay. The Constitution true. doesn't exist. Yes, ma'am, we have to make a break. You wanted to make a point. Yes, I did want to make Briefly. a point to Mr. Rubin. Yeah. As a Jerry. As a what? Jerry. As a peer of his, I am ashamed of him. I personally am also against the society. I feel that there are a lot of things that should be changed. But let's face it, no man who is established in his position is going to listen to a young and very intelligent man. I'm not running him down on his mind. His mind is very good. But no man who is established in his position as a congressman, as a businessman, or anybody yeah. is going to listen to someone who dresses and speaks up and talks as he does. Well, now, but he claims they wouldn't listen now, anyway. Yeah, may I to her? No, you can't. You I protest. Her? I oh. protest because I am living with a man, because I do what I please, and because I dress as I please. But I don't dress so outlandishly that people won't listen to what You're I say. You're more upset about my dress than you are about the no. fact that Vietnamese babies were just incinerated by American fire. Well, Why well, didn't you call and talk about that? that? Why didn't you call and talk about the fact that the seal we're Commercial. talking with Jerry See, Rubin. This guy runs his whole we'll life. We'll be back in just a moment. Business. Isn't that ridiculous? <laughs> Let 
me take a call here. Hi. Hi there. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Yes. Uh, we called, uh, we're law students at Ohio State University. Good. There are five of us here, and we're watching Jerry Rubin, and we're quite interested in finding out not only how he feels about the William Kunstlers, who are developing all over the country, but how he feels about the development of our legal system as evidence from the people that are now in our law schools. Oh, yeah. The problem with that question is he'll take 20 minutes to answer it. Now, help. Wait, wait why don't I answer the question? All right. Can help I answer? Me. Get, let's get more people on. Go. Yeah. Go on. Uh, William Kutzler is uh, one of the bravest men in this country. Uh, he found out that just by trying to defend undesirables, revolutionaries, dissenters, whatever word you want to want to call them, call us, uh, he found out that he was going to be jailed himself. He was turned into a co-defendant. It's now the Chicago 10. Kunstler got the highest jail term of any of us. He got five years for defending our rights in the courtroom. And the point behind it is that the, ju the judges in their death robes uh, are saying to William Kunstler's, if you defend revolutionaries, we're going to put you in jail too. But the law schools are seething with revolt. Me, law schools all yeah. over the place are... I'm sorry to interrupt. This is the operator. I have an important call for 469. No, you don't. Oh, operator. for me. Uh, that's for me. And I was expecting a call from my uh, operator. This is a television program, and we'd rather that you didn't. We'd rather that you didn't accept that important uh, call. All right. Okay. Uh, we still have the law students on the line. Yes, we're still here. Okay. Yeah. So, so w w what Bill told me was that everything he learned in law school was wrong and that law school it really adapts you to the system and that lawyers are going to have to become defendants and revolutionaries because they're going to have to defend the millions of young people who are jailed by uh, the american court system and there's thousands hundreds of thousands millions of black people in jail who can't afford bail who have no lawyers whatsoever and lawyers have to relate to, 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 to oppression and bill kunster is an example of a lawyer who relates to the oppression of black people long hairs may i uh, ask the caller what do you think of jerry what do i we're we're all right exactly right behind jerry when yeah, how about getting in front of me? Well, now, Everyone's wait. always behind all, me. The only problem now, how, is front. Uh, now, how can you... perfectly honest, the only problem with us being perfectly in front of you is that we'll never become lawyers, because lawyers have to pass fitness committees, and lawyers have to pass bar associations. Well, what are you doing at Ohio lawyers. State, then? Oh, see, that's the what thing. are we doing here? Yeah. We want to become lawyers, because we don't think people like Jerry Rubin should be prosecuted and persecuted the way they've been persecuted. And we have to be out there defending them. But, 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 all right. but, see, but the, the, fact, the fact is, Phil, that in, in this system, if anybody wants to be a revolutionary lawyer or a revolutionary doctor or a revolutionary TV personality, he'll get knocked out right at the very beginning. You can't survive in law school. You see, if a lawyer all, you know, says, I'm going to defend the Black Panthers and so forth, he just won't survive. Because the system, the system is, is meant to select people, and it selects those people that conform, and it selects those, those people that are middle class and that play along with the rules. But, but, but there's now a generation of people who aren't playing along with the rules. about law schools in general is that the people that teach in law schools are people that can't make it on the outside. They're people right. that, and because right. they can't make it on the outside, right. they're forced to relate to the people in the law schools, and the people in the law schools are becoming more and more like you every day. Right. Okay. Say it, brother. Thank you. Okay, thank you for thank the you. inside report. Let me go down here. Who's, uh, who has a question? Can I start in the back here? Anybody back here? Question? Yes, you'll stand. Yes. I was wondering, uh, your methods, uh, when you speak calmly and... Uh, and you have very logical and very good thoughts. And if you, I'm sure that you have a lot of people that start listening to you a lot more when you speak in this calm manner because your argument is beautiful. But you think he's turning people off by his personality? Well, not his he personality. It's just because uh, his personality is good. He's very likable. It's, yeah. it's uh, the madness that he seems to be doing. Yeah. Well, what do you want him to do? Do you want him to be more straight in his delivery or calmer? Huh? Is, that, is that your point? Well, it's, I don't know what it is. He's like off well, and on. No, no, I'll tell you what it is. See, 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 television is a very exciting media. And television, in a way, people don't really hear the words on television. They really see images. Uh, and, and what I am right now is an image, an image of rebellion, an image of anarchy. And I'm talking primarily to young people, if there are any of them are watching at this hour, uh, and, and relating to them. Uh, uh, now, people like, like uh, Phil want, want to fit me into a form, and they want me to answer questions that flow out of their minds. Uh, the pr I would almost say the prisons of their minds, because the question, you know, a question d almost determines its own answer. And so I'm trying 
trying to do that too. So I'm really like two people here right now. And one way I'm trying to relate to the young kids and say to them, be free, be freaky, break the medium. Television is an open, free medium. Smoke pot on television. Take off your clothes on television. Because that really is the message, the message of freedom. But then also I get these square questions from Phil about this and that, you know. And so I, I'm answering them too. But you, you dig it. I, I, if people listen, and I think from the calls, most of the calls we've had, you see people don't really listen. We, we find that, that the teachers really I don't listen to us. I think you came prepared to we say find, that. We, we find, no. I think you came no, prepared to no, say that. I didn't come prepared, prepared to say anything. No. I had no idea what I was going to say. Uh, um, we find that our parents really don't listen to us. Our teachers really don't listen to us. Uh, the, the, the cops really don't listen to us. People, adults, people in authority really don't listen to young people. And so therefore when you say talk to us rationally, it's really hypocritical because you really don't listen. You only listen when we go into the streets and make demonstrations. All of a sudden that, that's when you notice us. Do you think it's possible for a person who is against the war to be also against you? Oh, of course. It's possible for anything's possible. So, so, so then, yeah, sure. All right, then. I, I'm, ag I'm against the war and I'm against me. All right. Why are you against you? Oh, I don't know. I'm a living contradiction. Kind of a. Uh, Can't you understand contradictions? Why should. Uh, <laughs> why would you then you not be stoned? willing. You ever get stoned? Well, let's understand that. Why would you, you be not willing to discuss the virtue of your strategy? In other words, I've been discussing every, it all morning. No, you haven't. You've yes, been shooting me down I've every time. You've a all lot all of theatrics and a lot of words, but no real, uh, no real. Uh... Anyone want to smoke? <laughs> Thanks. Is the camera on? Anybody else? Yes. You'll stand. You'll stand. Put a light it. Yeah. Jerry? Yeah. Uh, there's been a big news blackout across the nation about what's been going on, student riots and things, and we'd like to know what happened at uh, Buffalo. Out of sight. Wait a minute. <laughs> News blackout. <coughs> Great. My hair's going to grow back all of a sudden. Watch. Shh, they cut my hair in jail. Buffalo, um, I, I spoke at Buffalo about two weeks ago. There were about 15,000 young people there. And it, what, what's happening in Buffalo is really what's happening everywhere. And that's students finding out that the universities don't educate and that uh, the deans are, are, are wardens and that the professors are just part of the system. And young people find out they've got to take their education in their own hands. And so you, there's the massive demonstrations in Buffalo. The first day they brought on the police. The police clubbed everybody they could find. Any young person they found, they just clubbed. There were bloody heads all over the place. And the students united. Students closed down the campus. And it, it's been going on for about two, three weeks. I mean, every day it's an escalation. You see a news blackout. The press is, uh, you're against the press too, huh? Hey. You and Spiro. Well, yeah, we're See, so, I, I mean, uh, what's happening in Buffalo is the same thing that's happening in Berkeley. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure it's happening at University of Dayton, University of Cincinnati, is that young people find out that the schools are jails, babysitting agencies. They don't get educated there, and we've got to take our education into our own hands. And that's what's happening. You're we're understand. taking our education into our own hands. You had a question. Yes. Uh, Briefly. In Jerry Rubin's book, it says... Which book is that? The one, do it, that you've been it. waving all over the place. Yeah. Well, no, see, the purpose the, of TV is to sell soap. The so, revolution uh, declares so. all land titles null and void. Out of sight. We are an urban. Uh, we are urban and rural liberators, liberators. seizing land for the people. People who believe they can own natural resources, uh, industries, or land are really candidates for mental institutions. Now, yeah, briefly. What is your question? This question I'll is. I'll hold the mic. Go, go. If this isn't uh, a communist takeover of all per, uh, private right property, on. what do you call it? Uh, I call it a communist uh, takeover of all private property. General Motors ain't going to exist. United Fruit ain't going to exist. All the capitalist industries aren't going to exist. We recognize the right of the people in Latin America, Asia, and Africa to nationalize and take over all American land. We don't recognize the right of capitalism. Capitalism is the enemy. We're going to create a communal Hi. society. Thanks for calling. You're on the air now. Hello. Uh, I'd like to ask Jerry how much education he's had, how far he's gone in school. Um, I flunked out everywhere along the line. I got my education in the streets. Yeah, you sure sound like it. I'll Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi, now you're on the air, Jerry Rubin. the audience? On the line. You don't like Hello. The, you didn't like the uh, questions yeah. from the yeah. studio uh, audience. This is another square from yeah. uh, the Midwest. Yeah. And I would like to ask this, Jerry Rubin. Does he really belong to the Communist Party? <laughs> does he really? <laughs> What do you mean by party? Is that a place where people go and get stoned and uh, have fun and uh, so forth? Listen, I belong to the Youth International Party. Communi this. Haven't you heard? The no, Communist listen. Party is conservative <laughs> these days. Where you been? Yeah, where have you been? Communist Party is like the supports the Democratic oh, Party. I'm much listen. more radical than the Communist no, Party. Well, if you'd shut up a minute, maybe someone else could talk. Yeah. 
What I would like to know is, is this man for real? Is he really for real? And people follow him? And he's, he's, and he's talking about uh, calling us fascists right. and, and okay. calling Dick Nixon a dictator and all this? Yeah. What does he I, think he is? I've got to make a break. I do. Another commercial we'll be back you don't believe moment. in. See, it's all money. Uh, Dellinger was one of the defendants in the Chicago 7 trial, and as you know, at the end of the trial, the judge gave everybody an opportunity to speak, and having read the transcript of the trial, I, if I could just share with you just for a moment, because in a way, Jerry, I think you, you might do a disservice to the other defendants, uh, you know, with all of this arm-waving and uh, uh, insulting. Dellinger, Dellinger said, uh, first, I think that every judge should be required to serve time in prison, to spend time in prison before sentencing other people there, so that he might become aware of the degrading and anti-human conditions that persist not only in Cook County Jail, but in the prisons generally of this country. Right on. You know, uh, now, uh, he also said, our movement is not very strong today. It is not united. It is not well organized. It is very confused and makes a lot of mistakes, but there is the beginning of an awakening in this country, which has been going on for at least the last 15 years, and it is an awakening that will not be denied. How to say? This is really, uh, um, I think, if you have the time, you really ought to... Uh, read uh, what happened at the trial of the Chicago 7. Wait, we're not I, talking about popularity contests here, thing. we're talking it's not about... the Chicago 7. All right, the Chicago, Chicago 10. 8, because there were 8 defendants. Let's not forget Bobby Seale, okay. Black Panther Party national chairman who's in jail for four years for contempt and who the government is now trying to put in the electric chair in Connecticut. Okay. And it's now the Chicago 10 because our two lawyers for defending us got jail terms of uh, two years for one and four years for the other. You are wearing another Mother for Peace emblem. Yes. Um, well, what are your thoughts now? I, I think he's beautiful. I agree with everything he says. Uh, I, I resent just one little thing. I don't like the age barrier. You're either together or you're not together. I'm over 30. I'm almost 40. But I'm together, you know. Right. I dress straight, but I, I, I think beautiful, I hope. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you on the age thing. Like, Bill, for example, Bill Kunstler right. uh, is over 50. I have to defend Dellin myself yeah. my team because I'm over 30. I shouldn't have right, to No, you, that. definitely not. Dellinger's yeah. over 50. That's when, when someone asked me how old I was. Yeah. That was really an attempt to put us in a, chron in a chronological thing. I said I was 15 right. because you're really as old as you want to be. Right. You're as old as you think. I mean, most of the people who, uh, who are in the yippies and who are active are, are old. You know, and the heroes of the Chicago trial, as far as I'm concerned, were Bill Kunstler and Dave Dellinger. You know, we were following them, really. So it, it's, it, but unfortunately, uh, the maj a great number of people who are secure, middle class, 40 and 50, are conservative. Yeah. And their children are rebelling against them. And that's the reality, and that's why we're put in that situation. Yes, now, why don't you cut your hair and your beard and put on a nice suit and a tie and, you know, look like a straight, because, you know, you really blow people's mind, you know, with all this outfit. You know, I think, you know, what are you, you know, on stage or off, you know? And this is the thing that seems to turn people off. As they, as they say, I don't know necessarily that if you did do this, that people would necessarily hear more of what you're saying than not. But they say, you know, you kind of come on like somebody hits you in the head with a hammer. And then what you're saying, too, is you say people don't listen to what you say. And I'm wondering, why don't you become a, subver a subversive in the manner of dressing like a straight, you know, and then really get in a crowd and blow them <laughs> apart, you know. Well, we, we got two strategies going. Dave Dellinger dresses yeah. in a suit yeah. and tie, yeah. and then we dress this. See, it's like different audiences. Like, I, I talk to, to, to young kids, and uh, suit and tie, well, that, that, they connect that to the president coming on and saying, we are now involved in a war in Laos, and you need a suit and tie. They're, that style, I mean, that style is, is the style of capitalism, the style of the Pentagon, and so forth. And we are a totally different style. I mean, I mean, what we're relating to is the racism of America. It's like America saying, why don't you get rid of your black skin and then you'll have equality? Huh. Why don't you get a haircut? Why don't you get rid of your black skin and then Thanks you'll have equality? Thanks for calling. Jerry Rubin on the line. Hi. Hello, I'd like to know, do you believe in God? <coughs> yes, God is a yippie. We're yes, ma'am, you had a question. Uh, Jerry Rubin is always talking about peace and everything and freedom for everybody. And what I want to know is, why can't everybody that is straight, what he calls straight, have their own freedom, the freedom to be that way? When he thinks he's, he's right to be any way he is, why is it wrong for somebody else to be the way they want to be? I don't know if a single person has been put in jail because they have short hair, because they drink alcohol, and because they have a suit and tie. I know hundreds of thousands of people who are in jail because they smoke pot, because they have long hair, and because they dress and crazy. Because they you got it all backwards. Law. Well, what's the, the law? The law, the law is, is used by the rich to put poor people in jail. The law is used by whites to put black people in jail. I don't care what you look like or what you wear or how long your hair is. Or Why don't you just behave? 
I get the message. I get the message. Was that what you were going to say? No, I, I don't think he... I don't care what he looks like. It doesn't matter to me. But I don't want him to say something about the way I look or the way you look. Yeah. It's too it's, bad that uh, you, you wear a tie and Jerry knows all about you. He is sure about your no, politics. No, he is certain no, that you don't no. care no, about Bill the Kunstler war. Bill Kunstler wears a tie. Look, look. You, well, you're, you're reading my mind. Bill Kunstler, well, you were reading mine Bill a little Kun while ago. Bill Kunstler wears a tie. Dave Dellinger wears a tie. The difference is I, 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 I met you for the yep. second time today. The first time was in New York on the dope deal. I met you for the second time today, and I, re and, I re and I reacted to your questions. I reacted to your questions. That's all. I reacted to your personality. I reacted yeah. to your vibrations. Well, you know, and and I, th I, think, I think for anybody who watches the show, I got your right 100% right on the nose, and there's no doubt about that yeah. when I called you Plastic Man. See, now he's questions? looking for applause. Well, now, you were supposed to questions. applaud that. People here it didn't happen. Questions. No, didn't I don't happen. applause. People are trying to ask questions, and you won't let Hi them. Hi there. Thanks for calling. Hair. You're on the air now. Hello. Let the people with long hair ask questions in the yes, audience. Yes, here's a person with long uh, hair. I bet why you. Why don't you let him ask questions in the, in the audience? Yes, sir. You had a question. Look at him. What Hello. a boring show this is. Hello. Hello. Yes. Just talk. Let's speak out. Hold it. Listen. Wait a minute. I can't hear you. Sit down just for a moment. You had a question. Oh, wait a minute. No. Hold it. Uh, Hold it. Just... Would you, they're not going to let me on again. Funny at all. No, again. no, I think it's very important. Why don't you have people here who came here who uh, might want to rap? You had a question you wanted to ask. Yes. yes. He'll be next, I hope. Yeah. Sir? Yes. I go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. You're on the air. Am now. I on the air? You sure are. Yes, All right. Uh, Phil? Yes? I would like to ask this gentleman why he advocates war in this beautiful country of ours on the street oh. and still... He's so opposed to our Vietnam War and all the wars in the past. Yeah. Because the only way that we can end the Vietnam War is by bringing home the same kind of feeling that the Vietnamese are experiencing. See, it's very hard for somebody who lives in suburban America to understand what it's like for a Vietnamese peasant to have uh, fire falling over their heads, to have white men in uh, American army uniforms coming to their villages. Well, why is it that you're always... Well, what, uh, sir, now let me talk. I'm a little bit older than you. And let me do okay. some talking. Will then I guess i got to let you talk. All right, now let me talk. Now we I gotta bring the war home. All right, I'll put no, it in a sentence. No, let's keep our wonderful America well, free and clean. Oh, ma'am. Now, Phil, I know you're not a dope peddler. Let's put it like that. Oh, uh, really? Uh, you know, little little euphemisms like that serve well, to. Sir, really, they cause let me radicalism. tell you something. They I'm, cause I'm, radicalism. I'm so opposed to the way you look, and I believe underneath. Me? Now, Phil, don't wave at me. I'm waving back at you. Right. <laughs> but let me tell you something. I think this young man, as the other lady said, should cut his hair, oh, put on man. a suit, don't put say on that, a tie, man. and let's take care of our young America. You're we've got a right into his hands. Man. We've got a beautiful uh, crop you're, of young people coming up, and let's keep them that way. You're giving him, oh, you're giving him good reasons for what he's doing. <laughs> Let's, you know, what do we care about his hair? That's oh, not no. Hey, Phil? I've got to run. Thanks for calling, okay? Thank you. Phil? Someone over here. Oh, about, yes, I you'll stand. some long hairs over here. Uh, I would just like to know who is paying for these students who are in school. Are they paying for their own education? I can answer that. Are they paying for their own that. education? I can answer that. No, I, I'm asking I am financed the by the Pope. I'm not talking. <laughs> the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church pays, for, pays the yippee salary. Don't you know that? No, I wasn't talking to you. Well, I was talking to the student, not just in the studio audience, but the ones that follow you, who is paying for their medical, their clothing, their food, the and their Church. school bill? Their parents. The Catholic Church. Someone Spiro else. Spiro Agnew financed the yippies. Do you have any friends over here? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'd like to know, with all the talk of youthful idealism, why is it that you and your friends talk so much hatred, and why you uh, urge destruction of ideas, ideals, and things? Well, we don't. We, uh, we urge destruction of the war machine. I mean, America is the most destructive, violent country that exists on the earth today. America is involved in a genocidal war against Asia. And we, we urge the destruction of the Pentagon, that instrument that's carrying out the war. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Briefly. I was, wonder I was wondering, Jerry, why, if all of your ideas are so good about how to stop the war and everything, why hasn't it stopped yet? It won't stop. Well... It, 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 the reason it won't stop is because the people who are running it don't care 
what the American people think. You take the last election. Eugene McCarthy got more votes in the Democratic primary than any other candidate. And, and if you combine it with Bobby Kennedy, an incredible number more votes. When it came time for the Democratic convention, Daley and Humphrey, and Humphrey, the guy who carried out the war, they didn't care what the people who voted for McCarthy think. They didn't care what McCarthy They ran right over him. So you think Nixon really cares what the well, people think? What would think? you suggest? The war did? in Vietnam, let me finish. The war in Vietnam is very unpopular. But what we're finding out is the American people have no power. Almost every, the, everyone's against the war these days. It doesn't mean anything to be against the war, but you can't change it unless you build a, a minute, violent Chair. movement. Let her make a point. Briefly. Well, I think, I think that it's okay how you dress and everything. I think no matter, no, really, Thank you. no matter what anybody, no matter how, how they the dress, dress? Yeah. what they say is what counts. Yeah. And, and if you say, I mean, if you make some, some good points and everything, people are going to listen to you. Who's going to listen? Spiro Agnew's going to listen? We'll be back in just a moment. seconds briefly book is titled do it you're on go brother uh, housewives watch your show housewives are oppressed they're oppressed in the kitchen they're oppressed by their husbands who, who give them their names and who give them why don't you let them decide that revolt. what do you know about housewives uh, I'm disappointed I think this could have been an interesting exchange of ideas thanks very much for joining us on this program service is provided and promotional fees paid by the following